All right, so let's try our hand at implementing our circular array. So let's open up the circular array Q class. And there's not much in here. There's an instance variable, which is a uh, elements, which is an array of, of references to objects. Um, we'll deal with the grow if necessary thing later. So we, we could, if we don't need like the deterministic behavior, if we don't need the, um, like the near real time stuff, we could have the array grow if we are about to encounter a buffer overflow. Um, it really depends upon the application if that's applicable or not. All right, so let's add some more actually instance variables here um, based on, so we know we need the array. That's what elements is, great. Other things that were in the diagram was the index of the head of the queue. So we'll add an instance variable head of type int. We also wanna keep track of the tail of the queue. And this isn't strictly required, but it's convenient. Um, it makes calculating like the size of the queue easier and detecting buffer overflows easier. Um, if we also add an instance variable for the current size, we could calculate that based on the index for head and tail, um, but it's easier just to have it as an extra instance variable. At least I'm pretty sure we can calculate it. I haven't thought that through entirely. All right, so these are our instance variables. So let's see how we can use these to make a circular array queue. We're gonna start with our constructor. So public circular array queue. And we're gonna initialize all of our instance variables right here. We'll initialize all four of them. Let me get rid of this. Um, I'm also gonna create a local final variable called initial size. Um, and for the sake of being able to step through this in the debugger and keep things reasonable, we're only gonna put five elements in our queue right now. We're gonna keep it really small. But we could make this whatever we want. Uh, so let's let's initialize everything. This dot elements, so it's an array. We might be a little rusty on arrays. With arrays, we still have to use the new operator. And since it's an array of objects, we have to say we want a new object array with initial size elements. So that's our syntax for creating a new array of references to objects. All those elements will be initialized to null automatically. This, oops, this dot head will set to zero. This dot tail will also set to zero. And actually, hmm, thinking about this, I think, I think we actually can't avoid having this extra instance variable current size because head and tail, if, they're, if their values are both zero, that could mean we have an empty queue, but it could also mean we have an entirely full queue. And the only way to keep track of that would be to keep track of how many elements we've actually added to this queue. So I think we need to have this current size piece. I don't think we can leave that out. All right, so everything's initialized. Very cool. All right, so now let's, uh, what's the next method? Checks whether this queue is empty. So that's our empty method, public Boolean empty. Um, since we do have current size, this is pretty easy. Return this.currentSize equals zero. So we're gonna just need to make sure that as we start adding stuff and removing stuff from our queue, we always keep the current size instance variable accurate.
All right, we've constructed our queue. We've got the constructor, we've got empty. So let's actually do add. Add is gonna be interesting. So switching over to the diagram again here. When we add, we add where, whatever index tail has is where we add the next element. And once we do that, tail needs to increment, potentially wrap around, and we need to keep track that there's more elements in our queue. So, oops. So let's see what that looks like from a code perspective. Public void add, we're gonna add some element. Um, let's assume for the sake of argument that we don't need to worry about deterministic performance. And if we are about to encounter a buffer overflow, we're just gonna make our queue bigger, okay? Um, that's the approach we're gonna take with this implementation. So we're gonna, we're gonna invoke a method which I have already written for us just cause it's a little bit more involved called grow if necessary. And we'll uncomment this in a moment. So we're just gonna invoke grow if necessary. So what that does is if we're about to overflow our circular array, it will grow it. It'll make a new array, twice the size, copy all the data over so we can keep going, okay? We lose our deterministic behavior, but we avoid getting like fatal errors. So like it all depends, it's all trade-offs. Depends upon the application, what is appropriate. If we didn't wanna support this behavior, we could have a different check here instead um, that throws an exception um, if the uh, queue is full. So we could do that too. All right, so now we know there's enough room in our queue. So let's update everything that needs to be updated. Let's update current size first so we don't forget. We have one more element in the queue. Let's store that element in the right index in the array. So we can say this.elements and then the index is gonna be this.tail. The value stored in tail is the index at which we insert the next element. We then need to increment tail to whatever the next value is. That's not quite sufficient because what if tail was just incremented to 10? Now it's not at a valid index. Um, so we need to handle the wraparound condition. The mod operator is great for this. We can do mod equals this.elements.length. Okay. So if tail is 10, elements.length is 10, 10 mod 10 is zero, tail is gonna be assigned to zero. So the mod operator is a great way to do all this wraparound behavior. We ran into that a couple of times in AP Computer Science A. Here it is again. That's all it takes to add an element to a circular array. Yeah, so with the mod thing, let's go through like some examples. Um, let's go back to our picture here. All right, so we have 10 elements here. So if tail, so we're gonna do like the value of tail mod 10. Um, and so, tail mod 10. So if tail is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, any of those values, mod 10 is the same value, right? So it's not gonna, as long as we're just moving tail along, nothing's gonna change. But when tail is at the end and ends up with a value of 10, so this becomes 10 mod 10, 10 divided by 10 is one with a remainder of zero. So that's gonna reassign tail to end up with a value of zero, which brings it from the end back around to index zero. So it's just a handy way to deal with this like wraparound case. Excellent question. All right, let's remove an element from our circular queue. So it's gonna return a reference to an object. 
our behavior is going to be that if the queue is empty, we throw a no such element exception, just like we would with a normal queue interface. Okay. If we were doing some sort of streaming application with like multiple threads, maybe we'd want to like block and wait. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to keep it simple and say that, hey, if the queue is empty, throw the new no such element exception, just like we've been doing elsewhere. Oops, sorry. If <laughs> this is empty. Assuming the queue isn't empty, we need to keep track of the fact that there's now one less element in the queue. We need to grab that reference out of our array um, and we need to update head to refer to the appropriate element. So let's do each of those steps in turn. Let's deal with current size first. We subtract one from current size. Let's store temporarily in a local variable the element that's being removed. And that's going to be at the index of head. And then we need to increment head just like we did with tail and handle the wraparound. Um, up here with add, I incremented tail and then I did the mod operation. Often for these types of applications, we do it together and we say like this dot head equals this dot head plus one mod this dot elements dot length. We just do it kind of all in one line, like add one to it, do the mod operation, assign that result back to head. And then we can return that element. So as kind of as the theme for this unit, the circular, the code for adding and removing to a queue based on a circular buffer is not that much, right? We've got a several lines, just a few lines here, a few more lines here, that's it. At this point, we can uncomment grow if necessary. I suppose that's a little bit more involved, but it's not too bad. Um, but what I think makes this challenging is more just the conceptual understanding of like what's going on with the data structure, right? Um, and that's really the focus of all of, of chapter 16. All right, let's give this a run.